Recent changes to the YouTube algorithm are poised to crush creators in 2019 and 2020. Here's why. Well over 250 videos are uploaded to YouTube each and every minute. That's well over 15,000 videos uploaded each and every hour and over 360,000 videos that are published to YouTube each and every single day. The cost to simply store these videos is absolutely mind boggling. This is just one of many Google data centers that store and stream those videos that anybody can easily upload to YouTube. How do you even begin to pay for all that? Well, with advertisers. And this is where YouTube's agenda gets really, really challenging and complicated. Imagine trying to create a platform that welcomes free speech, one that allows anyone to share their own thoughts, ideas, opinions, whatever it is that matters to them. And to make that possible, YouTube has to generate earnings. Again, who's going to pay for the data centers, the bandwidth, to stream videos that are uploaded every day? And what about the employees that keep YouTube running? Who's going to pay the employees? And then there's the YouTube creators. That's you and me. We're the lifeblood of YouTube. Without creators, there are no videos to serve ads against and it simply doesn't work. But how do you make all of these elements work together? creators, advertisers, and YouTube themselves. Well, you start out by paying creators. After all, it takes a tremendous amount of effort, thought, energy, and so on to publish great videos that keep viewers, the audience, coming back to the platform, coming back to YouTube. And if you don't pay the YouTube creators, they're gonna go somewhere else. It is a full-time job to create great video content. And yet paying creators is really a double-edged sword and means there will always be abuse on the platform. Low quality video content that is aimed to generate a quick and easy buck. Which brings us to a necessary evil and that's the YouTube algorithm. While YouTube and Google employ thousands of people that ultimately decide which videos are suitable and which are not, they simply can't police every single video uploaded to the platform. It's the algorithm that does the heavy lifting and ultimately decides which videos get promoted and which videos do not. And the YouTube algorithm is constantly being tweaked and changed. And these changes are created to ensure viewer satisfaction remains high. Again, if the viewers go somewhere else, it doesn't work. And video creators are always striving to uncover a new method to help them easily and quickly publish a viral hit and cash in. And it's this constant tug of war between creators and YouTube that makes YouTube so very challenging. Back in the day, YouTube looked like this and the algorithm was much easier to game. Metadata, and that's the text data that's entered for each video that's uploaded to YouTube, carried a lot more weight than it does today. And thus, it was a lot easier for creators to game the system. Now, idealistically, we'd like to believe that it's quality videos that get suggested here on YouTube and win. Success is based on quality. Well, sorta. You see, measuring quality is something the algorithm has always really struggled to do, to do well anyway. A quality video as seen by the YouTube algorithm is a video that viewers click on and watch. Nothing more, nothing less. Clicks and watch time, that's what matters. And here's where it gets kind of ironic. You'd think if it was such a simple algorithm that YouTube creators would have an easy time publishing videos that did really fantastic, and sadly, nothing could be further from the truth. Today's success on the platform involves a lot more than simply publishing a good or quality video. Video creators have to be able to please not only the viewing audience, but the algorithm itself. And sadly, this is where so many creators get left behind. Why? Well, back in the summer of 2018, YouTube released information that has had a real dramatic impact 
on which videos are getting promoted throughout YouTube, ultimately getting suggested to viewers. And this new information is based on what many refer to as the watch time funnel. And this watch time funnel highlights two of the most important metrics when it comes to success on YouTube. And can you guess what they are? Yeah, it's clicks and watch time, how long someone watches. And both of these metrics are critically important to really understanding what a broad audience, what a big group of people, what they're really interested in, what they'll click on, what they value, and what they'll watch again and again. Now the CTR, again, how often viewers are clicking, really gives the algorithm the information it needs to understand the interest of the internet, the interest of the viewers, the audience on YouTube, but it doesn't measure quality. And back in the day, if a video got a lot of clicks, YouTube saw that and was much more likely to suggest that video getting all those clicks to a bigger and bigger audience. And a video would blow up and drive millions of views. However, an algorithm built solely around viewer clicks is so easy to game. Creators abused and gamed the system by uploading clickbait and misleading thumbnails that hurt YouTube overall. The infamous Reply Girls are a really great example. In the summer of 2011, Reply Girls were everywhere. You couldn't watch a popular video without seeing a sidebar of their thumbnails filling up YouTube. And these YouTube Reply Girls created one of the most effective loopholes to have ever been leveraged here on YouTube. It was a huge problem for the platform. And this method allowed anybody with simply a webcam, a lot of audacity, and a pair to upload multiple videos very easily with little effort on their part. And those videos would go on to drive thousands and thousands of views. Now first, a Reply Girl would create what's called a video response. This was a feature available years ago. You kind of click a button and you create a video response to another video. And a Reply Girl would choose a video with millions of views and then they'd copy over the exact title, the exact tags, as well as the description, and they'd make their low quality uh, video with the boobs in them, right? Now they did that and it really would trigger the YouTube algorithm. Remember back in the day, the metadata, the title, the tags carried a lot more weight and viewers were clicking on those thumbnails all day long. It was a really explosive uh, combination and set YouTube up for lots of trouble. Now this was a huge problem and many smaller YouTubers were up in arms, which they should be. After all, these reply girls were taking views taking watch time, and that would make it just the harder for smaller channels to grow. And this led to big sweeping changes based on how the YouTube algorithm really rewards videos on the platform. Here you can see an article that was published years ago, YouTube responds to Reply Girls, changes related and recommended video algorithm. And months later on Friday, October 12th, 2012, we got this statement which was published to the YouTube creator blog. We've started adjusting the rankings of videos in YouTube search to reward engaging videos that keep viewers watching. And the rest is history. Watch time as a thing was born. And this brings us kind of to an interesting period in YouTube history, post reply girls. Literally from 2012, all the way to the summer of 2018, for six years, YouTube was really vocal about how the algorithm rewards watch time. Back in the day, if you were to open up your YouTube analytics, the first metric you'd see, watch time. Look to the right, you'd see average view duration, which is just a derivative, a different type of watch time. Scroll down to the bottom of your top performing videos and guess what they're sorted by, yep watch time. Post Reply Girls, YouTube mentions watch time again and again and again, but very rarely, if at all, do they publicly mention the importance of CTR, click-through ratio, or how often viewers are clicking on a video. That is until 2018 with the addition of the new and improved YouTube Studio. And slowly, YouTube really starts sharing the importance 
of CTR. Finally, YouTube peels back the curtain and shares a more realistic view of how the algorithm really rewards videos on the platform. Today on YouTube, it's not just about publishing great videos, it's about publishing videos that an audience clicks. Simple as that. And this brings me to an important question. Does YouTube reward thumbnails and compelling titles at borderline clickbait, as well as video stunts, more than the actual video itself? Clearly, this is a hard question to answer, and I don't think we're there yet. But make no mistake, the writing's on the wall. Viewers make that creators that understand the importance of CTR are doing anything they can within the terms of service to get viewers to click. Today, it's a lot less about the quality of a video. It's a lot more about the marketing behind it. It's about being a little bit clickbaity. I might not like it. You might not like it. But this is where we're at. It's not going away. And sadly, I think this is where a lot of great creators are getting left behind and it's only gonna get worse. Case in point, this is the Mr. Beast channel. And if you notice, over the last 30 days, he's gotten over 295 million views. That is insane. That is incredible. And if you look at the growth of the Mr. Beast channel, it's evident that he really blew up during 2018 when CTR became available in YouTube Studio. When we as creators really saw just how important CTR is. You know what, Mr. Beast is smart, creative, and he understands the importance of winning the click. We may not like this, but this is where YouTube is heading, make no mistake. YouTube creators that embrace these changes are gonna be able to weather the storm and move on, grow on YouTube and so on. But it's important to see these things as they are. Again, things evolve and change. Uh, recently, there was a video published to the Creator Insider channel mentioning that YouTube is testing out near real-time CTR. They're improving upon the metric that it's already got us here. And furthermore, there's talk about a newfangled kind of fancy tool that's gonna allow video creators to test one thumbnail against another thumbnail to really identify what's getting clicked more often. And for those that don't focus on winning the click, they will struggle. In fact, this technology is already available in TubeBuddy. You can split test your thumbnails. It's one of the ways that I've grown my channel. It's incredibly powerful. You know, at the end of the day, we might not like the decisions that YouTube is making, but it's us, the viewers, the viewing audience, that ultimately click and decide what we want and ultimately how YouTube is being programmed. Click on the yellow thumbnail and you'll discover just how powerful split testing and CTR is here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Click on the yellow B to the G icon to do just that and when you do, you're gonna feed a poodle. I've got two and they're hungry. I'll see you next time. You dig?